Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the Un Yuki. So this is the Yuki right here. For those of you who have been following along since the announcement, this is what it looks like up close and personal. So white shell, which is actually a ceramic baked coating. I think it's an aluminum, aluminum alloy. I think I have it written down. Uh, glass window, you know, very, very attractive on the side. Design by Un Audio. I don't know if there's anything in there. USB-C and 4.4 and 3.5 millimeters. So on the back, you get two volume buttons, and if you double click, you get the gain switch. So Yuki USB deck and Pyrez Audio. So very, very attractive looking device. Um, kind of a similar window looking uh, thing to my Oom B1S, which we'll talk about a little bit. This is the case that comes with it. It's kind of a le leather-ish case. And I mean, it doesn't come with it. It means you have to pay for $15, but if you pay $15, then it does actually ship with it. But uh, yeah, it's actually sold separately. It doesn't come in the box. So in the box, you do get this round uh, box. Uh, cool stuff. It says Yuki. I think this says Yuki, but inside, there's not, not a whole lot. You get the... USB-C cable, which is a nice braided 8-core SBC style cable, so that is very nice. Everything is very nice. Um, it is a pricier dongle, so it's no surprise that uh, everything from the design to the window to the cable is done very well. So we'll kind of begin there with the spec dump and talk about the general, you know, this is a dual DAC CS43198 DAC. Two outputs, 3.5, 4.4, low harmonic distortion, low noise floor. On the single-ended side, you get about 2V RMS and 90 milliwatts. And on the balance side, on 4.4, you get 4V RMS and 160 milliwatts. So as I mentioned, aluminum alloy structure, which is underneath the baked enamel finish, glass window, the PCB is a hybrid ceramic PCB, and it's actually dual layer. So I think the only thing that you can't see is there's actually a dual layer PCB. So there's a back of it here, which you can see. So it would have been really cool if they did a dual window situation, but they did not. But do know that they do have separate boards for the deck and the amp sections. So it is a high-end dongle, and it is priced high-end at $160 as well. So the sound. And... And I, I sort of brought out the B1S for this particular reason. And I've had the B1S for a few years. And the most surprising thing about the B1S is it, it pretty much varies from set to set. Uh, there is no real, I wouldn't say there's a consistent sound to it. I, I think as close to a consistent sound as I have ever said, it, was, it sweetens up a lot of sets, especially hybrids. But you tend to hear a lot of Oon's take on musicality and how they kind of sculpt sound kind of comes through with the class a amplifier and and how they tune this it's not reference style it's not flat um, it's very surprising what it does to certain sets and yuki is very much along the same way depending on what set you plug into it you'll get sort of a different take on their musicality on how that set will sound compared to other sources you may have so Again, like the B1S, I wouldn't say this is a reference. It's not flat. It's uh, colored and, and musical in a way that is, I think, familiar to people who have who have tried UN devices before. I think they tend to have a take on musicality and providing high-quality reproduction that's a little different than other brands. So, so we'll talk about the sound across three different sets and my experience with plugging them into Yuki. But... You know, I pretty much said this already. So, but having a B1S for a couple of years, it's very difficult to describe how Oon blends their sense of musicality with very high quality reproduction. Not a flat, transparent reference style sound. This is a CS DAC with Oon sound styling on top of it. In that way, it's really not like other dongles that you might have. So, Yuki is along the lines of B1S. So it will be mostly a surprise how it changes the sound of each set. Sometimes it'll be for the better, sometimes not. It's exactly the same the way the B1S works in that way. So with a set like CC or Rhapsody, and I think Rhapsody happened to be the one that I was listening to at the time this arrived, 
And I had actually spent quite a bit of time fine-tuning Rhapsody with the switches and the tips and, and some filters on the nozzle to get it to just exactly where I liked it. Plugged it into Yuki and it sounded brighter. It kind of it kind of reverted back to what I had fine-tuned out of it. it sounded a little bit spicy. Um, just a, a tad a hair brighter or slightly forward than I was expecting. And again, plugging sets into Yuki is going to be a little bit of an unexpected experience. And, and it was right there on my first set with Rhapsody. That's exactly what happened. And I'll say it was probably the most CS-like I've heard. Um, and it was very unexpected. I had assumed that in the last Oon device that I had actually had was the Flamingo. I mean, I use this all the time, so I kind of know this will be surprising. Flamingo is very much a tube, um, maybe traditional Oon style, that um, kind of warmer, more harmonics, rounder. That's kind of what they shoot for. This one sounded much more CS. Like if you have other CS dongles, I think I tend to think they're a little bit brighter, a little bit sharper. That's exactly what I got from here, and it was kind of surprising. I thought they would try to go the opposite direction, but that's the way Rhapsody came across. So the next set, one I've been listening to for a little while as well, is the Ziget Nuo, and that's a bright set. It has a really high 10K upper treble, treble. It's, it's actually a pretty bright one. And then when you plug it in here, it's almost the opposite experience. There's a subtle warmth that I did expect. That's exactly what I was expecting in Rhapsody was to have this sort of warmth go over it the way I was expecting from almost a Flamingo or even a B1S, but it really wasn't any brighter. The, vo the vocals are a touch more forward on the Yuki on that set, but the upper treble is actually a touch lower. And it, and I would say the same thing about B1S. It's very hard to explain why, th why sets sound the way they do on either of these devices. Why Nuo, which was already a bright set, actually comes across as less bright. It almost sounds like Zero Two. The first time I heard Nuo on Yuki, it sounded almost exactly like Zero Two. And then I graphed it, and I'm like, oh, that's that's exactly what Yuki is doing. So a high energy set like Nuo will sound more forgiving and the mids are sweeter. B1S does that sound, that sound style very well. I tend to use it on brighter sets for that exact reason. Again, unexpected, but better than my topping. Topping on Nuo is as bright as you're expecting from the graph. Not I'm not nearly as forgiving as it is on Yuki. So again, I would put the, I would put Nuo definitely in the category of it was very unexpected, but very much better than than how my topping does Nuo. And then a higher end set. So like Soft Ears, Twilight. And what, what to notice about Twilight is where you hear, this is kind of where you, you get a very resolving set, where you start to hear Oon Engineering and that black background, that sharp contrast that you get from a black background. That's what people pay a lot of money for, to have those two things happen at the same time. More harmonics, more rounder for a CS-style set. But the stage on Twilight should be really deep. Um, it's actually a very, very nice staging set. And this one comes across as more CS-like, and not quite the depth that you get on B1S. And it's sort of where I noticed there's... There is a bit of Oon engineering on the front end, on the amp side, to make it sound music, their musicality and musical. But the back side, still, there's still a CS back to it. And, and you kind of get back to the difference in devices, right? This is a much bigger device. They could put a lot more engineering into changing the sound and to sculpting the sound. In this form factor, you're sort of very limited on what you can do. And I think... I think Twilight sort of points out the limitation of these guys. And, and as far as high-quality reproduction, I think Yuki does it very, very well. As far as, you know, the top 1% bits that make B1S special, I don't think they necessarily translate into dongles. And, and Yuki is, is kind of a bit there. But generally, I think even regardless of whether it's Yuki or not, I think dongles have problems doing that kind of bit, that bit that really separates you know, dedicated huge devices from, you know, convenience devices such as dongles. So, but as I said, three sets, three experiences. And if I keep on plugging in different sets, you'll get different experiences on Yuki. It's just the way it is. Same reason I keep going on back to B1S. You're just never really sure what's going to happen. Um, sometimes it is really amazing. Sometimes it's kind of okay. Yuki is, is going to be the same way. You'll just keep on trying sets and be kind of blown away by some sets and how it renders them and other sets you'll say yeah, it's okay it's about as good as my other one but 
Yeah, it's a it's not quite the same as as other dongles. So on kind of the boring stuff, playing music with Windows, I will say the first time I plugged this one into my Windows box, Windows 11 decided that it was an other device, not an audio device. So that kind of no sound came out because it was an other device. And uh, so if that happens, unplug it, plug it back in, and it should show up as an audio device. And then to follow on to that was they actually, you need a, um, if you're into DSD, playing DSD files on your DAX, you need an ASIO driver for FUBAR. That driver, UN's version of that driver actually requires the device to be plugged in. So if you couldn't get A right, if you plugged it in and it became as another device, that's actually going to roll into trying to install their driver and it won't actually install. So do be sure to unplug it, plug it back in, it shows up as an audio device, and then you'll get the ASIO driver. FUBAR will work fine, and it will render DSD-256 um, fine, as it should. So that was that. So who should buy this one? You know, some people are buy dongles and DAC amps for transparency. Some buy them for musicality. This one is definitely in the latter category. Some people enjoy variety in sets and sources. That is exactly what Yuki does for you. So thank you again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.